Katie and Rachel from The Stitch Sisters and we're back with our fifth video in the series. Well done if you've watched them all back to back. <laughs> uh, this one is all about synthetics. Yes, so this is a series of videos that we're doing for Minerva Crafts. Um, if you haven't seen any of the others, then go back and check those out first where we have covered uh, cotton, silks, wools, and just a general intro to fabric terminology. Yes. Um, but as Nikki said, this one is all about synthetics. Now, what we thought would be useful, because I didn't know most of this stuff until I started mm. looking into it, was just the minefield, to... though, isn't it? It is, <laughs> and because we're talking about chemicals, then I think it gets a little bit more complex. Scary. I think uh, for mm. most of us, we hear those terms and we think, science lesson, I'm not at school. Yes anymore and we don't want to listen anymore but I will give you a very brief overview of okay. what the main synthetic fabrics are because I do think it helps you understand a yeah. little bit more about what it is that you're working with <coughs> so there are four I am going to refer to some notes whilst to do this so yeah. uh, excuse me if I need to look away um, there are four main synthetic fibers mm -hmm that you might have uh, used or be familiar with. Um, there are many more than that, but I think just these four, under the, the banner of these four, you can cover most fabrics. Mm -hmm. So one is polyester, which I'm sure you've heard of. Nylon is another one. Mm -hmm. uh, rayon or viscose is another one. And then acrylic is the fourth one mm -hmm. that I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of. So polyester and nylon are both made from chemicals. Right. Um, but the main difference between them is uh, polyester um, is spun directly from the chemical solution. So the yarn is spun directly from the chemical solution. Whereas nylon is uh, formed into a liquid and it's almost blasted out of like shower head style spouts into all these different strands and then it's woven into yarn. I'm imagining a Willy Wonka style factory yeah, doing exactly. that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they both have great properties. Um, nylon is older, so nylon has been around since the 40s. Uh -huh. um, and uh, basically, uh, well actually no, I think polyester has been around the same sort of time. Polyester became popular in the 70s, so if you think about Saturday Night Fever style suits, uh, that's when Dresses. polyester... In fact, I found this interesting thing that was said about polyester in the 70s, the way it was sold. Um, so the tagline was, a miracle fibre that can be worn for 68 days straight without ironing and still look presentable. <laughs> I wonder what poor person had to test out that theory. Yes. No, you can't wash no. it. Just no keep washing. wearing it. <laughs> 68 days. In, in a way, I think that's good, but in a way, it's really bad as yeah, well. 68 days straight. Yeah. No. Right. Who would want to wear the same no. thing? Exactly. Days. So polyester um, is kind of uh, like plastic. That's the easiest way to describe it. Um, but obviously, the way that it's woven into fabric means that it doesn't have that plasticky feel. In fact, okay. it can be woven into lots of different feels or hands and lots of different mm -hmm. densities and weights. Mm -hmm. um, nylon is a more expensive fabric, um, which is why we don't use as much of it these days. The production of it is more expensive, uh, but it is much stronger than polyester. Right. Um, so it's really durable, it's water resistant. Um, so there are times when adding nylon to a fabric, a polyester fabric or mm -hmm. a natural fabric, will improve the properties. Mm -hmm. So it might make it more durable, it might make it more water resistant. It's used a lot in sportswear and active wear um, mm -hmm. because uh, it, they need to be water resistant. Is it usually used in smaller quantities then if it's expensive? Yes, so you'll usually find a small percentage of your fabric or your garment is mm -hmm. nylon. Right. And very rarely will you find 100% nylon products right. or okay. even high percentages of nylon. Um, Nylon is, it works particularly well with um, elastanes because nylon naturally has a little bit of stretch in it. Mm -hmm. So when you put it with elastane, you get extra stretchy things, which is why it's used a lot in, in sportswear, sportswear and that sort Excellent. of thing. Um, the next one it's worth mentioning is rayon or viscose. Now, a lot of people would wonder what is the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. And there is no difference. So in America, they call it rayon. And in the UK or in Europe, they call it viscose. It's exactly the same, same product. Uh, product. Um, those terms have become interchangeable now so mm -hmm. uh, people in the UK and people in Europe, Europe European manufacturers may call their product viscose or rayon, rayon. Um, yeah. but in America they, they do mainly stick to rayon okay. so you now know that's exactly the same thing there's yes. no difference if you see either you're talking about the same thing so viscose or rayon um, has a lovely drape um, and it's cheap to, to manufacture um, it's actually a natural fibre mm -hmm. so it's made from cellulose which is the same thing that cotton is made from Okay. Um, but the way that it's produced is a synthetic process so chemicals are used to turn it into fabric okay which is why it comes under the synthetic category mm -hmm. but I kind of I love rayon on viscose so much because I think it comes
comes, it's the best of both worlds. It's nice and cheap, so you can buy it really easily and yeah. it's within everybody's budget. Um, but it has this lovely quality to it, lovely drapey quality. It feels like much better quality than it actually is. Okay. Um, but it's natural, so it feels nice against your skin and yeah. it breathes really nicely um, and um, it's really nice to, to wear. Mm. Um, the thing with viscose is it's not very strong. It's actually quite a weak fabric. Okay. Um, and um, especially in direct sunlight over time it would deteriorate quite a lot and okay. um, so even viscose fabrics are often mixed with a percentage of polyester just to try and strengthen them uh, a little right. bit um, but 100% viscose fabrics are going to feel lovely mm -hmm. um, but they probably won't be quite as durable so perfect for dresses that you wear I don't know once a week a couple of times a month or something mm -hmm. um, but not something you'd want to wear every, every day. day okay um, acrylic is the fourth one that I want to mention and acrylic is a is a man-made fiber it's mm -hmm. a polymer and it's made to uh, look and resemble wool sheep's wool so it's um, it's quite scratchy on its own because mm -hmm. it resembles the cheaper fibers from the wool yes. um, so the short coarse hairs that's the closest mm -hmm. thing uh, to uh, to the, that that's what it resembles most mm -hmm. um, and so acrylic is very rarely used on its own you wouldn't want to wear anything that was a hundred percent acrylic that would mm -hmm. be awful um, so usually that is then mixed with other fibers such as polyester or viscose mm -hmm. um, to soften it um, yes. and to make it more wearable but also to make it last mm -hmm. a little bit more um, hundred percent acrylic would also be incredibly warm and obviously you don't necessarily want that amount of warmth warmth for everything that you're uh, making, everything yeah. in your wardrobe. So that's why some of the other fibres are mm. added sometimes to just reduce the density and of the warmth the, yeah, of yeah. the fabric. If you're wearing something ready to wear, have a look at the label. And I found, we found that when we were talking about it the other day, I had a jumper on and we had a look and it was, yeah. it was something, was it? 90% acrylic or something like that and then yeah. there's a bit of wool in it there's yeah. a bit of polyester in it yes and it's it's interesting to see not only for your the fabrics that you're using to make your own yeah. wardrobe with but the stuff that you're buying ready to wear off the off the house yeah street as well. absolutely and that's a great tip because a lot of us are working towards a me made wardrobe mm. but I mean very rarely are we going to be a hundred percent and most of us are a long way off that yeah um so look at your ready to wear wardrobe mm. just look at your labels and see what the the composition of the fabric mm. is and and that combined with what you know it feels like to wear, how it hangs, the feel of yeah. it, will teach you as much about fabric composition as Absolutely. anything else. So. And also the things that you might find that you like skirts which are made from scuba or from... So you can find the fabrics that you're picking mm -hmm. from the high street. Absolutely. And then try and replicate that in your own me made style. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> now we've talked about the four main <coughs> synthetic fabrics or mm -hmm. synthetic fibres. Now we're going to talk about the different fabrics that are created with those yes. fibres. So we're starting off with really light fabrics again, like we've done in the other videos. And this one I'm gonna show you now is a chiffon. So this is meant to be, uh, this is a polyester chiffon. So it's meant to replicate the look and the feel of silk chiffon. So if you haven't seen our silk video, you can pop back with the link above and that will tell you all about chiffon. But this is a much cheaper, uh, more widely available um, option mm -hmm. and it's four four ninety nine a meter. Four ninety nine a meter. So it's got lovely drape and it's nice and soft but it's very sheer. Um, and this is another one that we've already used as an example. Um, mm. It was We have covered silk organza in our silk video, but we also use both of these fabrics as examples for lightweight fabrics and their different properties. Yes. So this was our example of a lightweight fabric <laughs> that has lots of volume and Look body. At it. <laughs> so this is actually made from nylon. It's 100% mm. nylon. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it gives it that very plasticky feel. Um, but it's still soft. It would yeah. still be very nice and comfortable mm. to wear. The raw edges are quite quite soft as well so it would be that you wouldn't have scratchy seams or anything um, and it would be lovely as an overlay and that's one of those two-tone ones we were talking about it in is yes yeah. so it's videos. iridescent so we can see that you've got different color threads and if I you can see that there but you've got these very fine pink fibers sticking out the top here um, and then if we had fibers coming out the other way um, then they would be purple, yeah. so um, the two of them together creates this iridescent gorgeous changes in different lights I and that like one I want to is do a magic show uh, so that 299. one is 299 a meter and yeah. is 100 percent nylon excellent so moving up from that uh, next up we've got a polyester georgette so i'll show you this one 
and this can come as either polyester or viscose. You sometimes get double georgettes as well, yeah. which is slightly heavier. This is on the lightweight side and it's a sil another silk substitute, but it's much heavier than the, um, the chiffon that I showed you earlier. It's not nearly as see-through. Yes, so it's great for blouses and things In like fact, that. In fact, I think this one is a double georgette because what you ah. find is that the uh, the standard georgettes are still quite sheer and okay. I know if you held this one up to the light you'd be able to see through it but it isn't actually that sheer at all no. so I think it probably is a double georgette. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's got this kind of, you can see it's got a slight texture to the fabric um, but it's it feels soft to the touch and it's very drapey as well sorry I've just elbowed yes. you there um, it's, um, it's a gorgeous print as well, isn't it? Yeah. Really lovely print. Who's this um, by? Uh, well, um, it's, it's Minerva. It yes, it's not a designer that I can see. Um, but it's, it's only five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Oh. You can make a beautiful blouse out of that. Ooh. They have this in a variety of colours as well. I'm yeah. sure I remember when we uh, when we asked for the colour for the, um, the fabric itself. It's beautiful. That's lovely. Yes. Really lovely. Now I have got a very fancy one here fancy. because this is an Atelier brunette. <laughs> Fabric. Now we're all familiar with the Telly Brunette, but mainly for their lovely sweatshirting and jerseys. But this is one of their woven fabrics, and this is a viscose chalet. Um, now, chalets are very popular fabric, and you mm. will have something chalet in your wardrobe, guaranteed. Mm. Um, but chalet is usually a, um, a rayon or viscose uh, composition, mm -hmm. um, and it's woven often like a twill, so you get those diagonal lines. Um, but this one isn't. This one is quite a loose weave, it which is, makes yeah. it almost like a voil. Mm. Um, but it, it feels absolutely gorgeous, and I just love that print. It just looks really luxurious, um, which you would expect from Atelier yeah. Brunette. Um, so Shally's kind of made a comeback. It was really big in the sort of 70s and 80s and then it sort of died down a little bit as fashion trends do and now it's mm. made it a huge comeback as, as the trends for more drapey garments have come back yeah. in. Um, so it's really lovely for any kind of floaty dress, like 1940s style chi, chi dresses mm. um, and uh, 1970s mm. pussy bow blouse style dresses. Um, just anything that you need to have some drape and fall in soft folds. We made some uh, harem pants last year with some shallies. Oh, we wear. did, so, yes. yes. Perfect for that sort of, of thing. Palazzo pants, that just nice, so lightweight, How usually much? not sheer. This one is 16.99 a metre, um, so which you'd expect from a designer fabric, but it's very beautiful. beautiful. And again, in a, a variety of different colourways as well. Next up, we're going to be talking to you about uh, a range of fabrics known as crepe. Um, now, crepe usually has uh, quite a rough texture. Yeah. Um, and, um, and it's... Uh, yeah, crinkly quite, almost. quite, yeah, yeah, almost crinkly, but quite yeah. a rough hand. But crepe comes in different weights, and some of the lighter weights don't actually have that, mm -hmm. um, but they are still known as as crepe, um, and it's worth considering those. So first of all, I'm going to show you what's actually called a peach skin, um, but it still kind of fits within the crepe family. In fact, yeah. Georgette, the fabric that we just showed you, also fits within the crepe yeah. family. So this is a peach skin, um, and you won't be able to see a rough sort of mottled effect on it like you would on a normal heavier weight crepe because it doesn't have one it's got a lovely smooth hand um, and it does feel like the skin of a peach it does which is why it's in called fabric peach form. skin yes exactly <laughs> but you can see how fluid and drapey that is gorgeous um, really really lovely usually extremely cheap um, so this one um, I don't know how much this one was because this one wasn't on the list um, but usually peach skin can be as little as 2 99 up to sort of 7 99 a meter so it's a nice yeah. cheap alternative for things like the Ogden cami or yeah you know, Fifi pajamas or things Things where you want them to be very light um, but you also want to have lots and lots of drapes. Lot. This one here <coughs> is a very lightweight crepe. Mm. It also has a very smooth finish and this one is what you would call crepe de chine. So crepe de chine originated from China, which is okay. what it means, um, and uh, it, um, it's very luxurious. Silk varieties are obviously even more luxurious, but this one does have a very silky feel to it. Um, it does feel very luxurious, even though it's polyester. And the thing is, with modern day polyester fabrics, they used to be frowned on and people didn't like to wear them. Yeah. But technology's moved on so much now yeah. um, that actually I think um, mm. these are, a lot of experts would really struggle to see the difference between them um, because they do feel so lovely. So this one, let me just find it for you, um, is 3.99 a meter. 
uh, this one. Often these Beautiful. lightweight crepes or crepe de chines come in narrower widths. So this one's 44 inches and that's yeah. definitely something to look out for because I've been caught out before buying uh, crepe and thinking that I had enough to make something oh, but right. because I didn't realise it was only narrow, I didn't. <coughs> so that's one to watch out for. What have you got there? Satin bat crepe. Yes. So oh, crepe you've got satin. crepe bag satin. You've got a shiny side which is obviously gorgeous and silky and then you've got your crepe side and I think this is a good example of actually seeing the crepiness of crepe. <laughs> if you can see that on the camera, it's very difficult to, there we go, we can just about see it there. Yes, so you can see lovely. that bobbliness. Yes. So we'll have pictures and stuff that we'll be inserting of close-ups of the, of the, of the fabric. Yeah. Uh, so you can see in more detail. But this is gorgeous, it's got a, a, definitely a heavier weight yeah. than the other ones, but you've still got a lot of drape. And of course you can choose what side you want to use and this is this would be great for fabrics where you want to show a little bit of both sides of the fabric that would be very mm -hmm. interesting to yeah, play around with that um, and it's then, also what's known as um sometimes they're called double faced fabrics which just okay. means that they've got two face sides two sides that you could use yeah. in your garment making Fabulous. And then we're moving up to the heaviest of the crepes. So this is a triple crepe. You do get double crepes as well. It's just, it will be between the, the Double crepe ones. is about the weight of this that. one. But this is slightly heavier again. And what a gorgeous colour, can I just say. Oh. And you can see how that is draping there. And it's just beautiful. And this is, again, you can see... There's the crepiness. Look at that. It's Lovely. gorgeous. But it's got it's got so much structure to it. I love crepe. And One I of think my absolute favourite fabrics to wear. It's just beautiful. And I think it would wash fantastically. Yeah. You wouldn't need to iron it particularly. No, it just comes straight no. out of the washing machine. That is the great thing about <coughs> synthetics, is they very rarely need ironing. Uh, yeah. I mean they don't iron particularly well, some of them you can't put a lot of heat on them anyway. But often they come out of the machine, you hang them up and by the time they're dry they're ready to wear. Just doing a little pleat to see how it's going to look but it does have beautiful drape and beautiful it feels drape, but so still soft. some body yeah that's a really good example of a fabric yeah. that has both it's got a lot of you know you can see how much bounciness it's got in it so it's it's, it's a great fabric yes. Very and, versatile. Um, yes, it is. And it's easy to sew too. We like to uh, think of it as crepe is always, always has drape. So mm. if you're not sure what the you're going to make drape. something out of and you need something <laughs> drapey, then right. you want to pick a crepey. <laughs> Okay, the next fabric I want to show you is a polyester sateen. Now, you might be familiar with cotton sateens, mm -hmm. um, which is a cotton that is woven with a satin weave to give it a sheen on the face of the fabric. Uh, this is polyester that has been woven in the same way. So I'm not sure how well you can see the sheen on there, um, but it does have a lovely satin-esque uh, sheen on it if you look on the back it's quite matte, matte yeah. um, and then on that side it's lovely yeah. and shiny um, so this is a designer fabric this is a John Caldor um, so it'll be another one of their ex designer fabrics um, it's um only 7.99 a meter so it's um oh let me just check that hold on no it's 8.99 a meter um so uh Beautiful. it's um it's a really reasonable fabric mm. i think for a nice dress yes um but um it's got quite a bit of quite a lot of weight to it so you wouldn't want necessarily to make a top out of it i think it is more suited to for, dresses yeah. or um bottom half garments mm -hmm. um but um just like all sateens it has a tiny bit of stretch added so it's got two percent spandex added which just makes it give a little bit yes. um, on the areas where you need a bit of movement. So it'd be good for a wiggle dress or something Ooh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah, lovely. Yes. Perfect. Okay. And I've got Gabuccino. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this because you can see the weave quite the well. Weave. The twill weave. So you can see those diagonal lines, hopefully, going across the, uh, the fabric. And this is a really stiff fabric. So it's a cross between... It's between a garbadine and a chino. That's right. So that's why it's called garbachino because it's kind of halfway between the two, like a blend between yes. the two. I am going to be buying some of this from Minerva because I have a trench coat on my Make Nine. Oh, yes. Um, so uh, that's what I'm going to make it out of. I have a trench coat on my Make Nine as well. Well, then it's we both need to buy It's some. a different one. Yeah. Can I just mm -hmm. say, this is going to cost my bank balance a lot. Of yes, both of us. Why did we decide to do this? I don't Honestly. know. I don't know because we're getting to play with fabric all oh, day. Yes. That's why. What did you do? today I mostly stroke fabric. fabric all day <laughs> long so next up we have um, a lovely uh, satin brocade so oh, this look. is where you see all this beautiful vibrant 
fabrics. So a brocade is often made with four or more different uh, uh, threads and all mm -hmm. in different colours. And one of them is usually a lame thread, which is where you get this uh, gold effect from. So brocades were originally made from silk and were very, very expensive. I can imagine. Um, yes, um, but now, luckily for the rest of us, um, <laughs> you can get these beautiful polyester brocades. Fabulous. Um, and that's what this is. Um, most people, or most fabric suppliers will have a range of these Chinese brocades, which often have dragons or cranes and that sort of thing on them. But you can get brocades in all sorts of different designs. I've got a lovely dress that I made out of a floral brocade. Yeah. Um, sometimes the metal fibres in them can be quite scratchy, so yeah. that is definitely worth um, having a, a good feel. Soft. If it's a scratchy one, you definitely want to put a lining yeah. in it. Um, but it's sure, a nice, as well. luxurious looking fabric for a very small price tag. So you can see there the four different colours that are going through <laughs> it and that's on the back side and then you've got this hot pink on the front side oh. and this one has been woven with a satin weave which is why it's got that lovely satin finish. Beautiful. How much is that one? That one is, hold on the laptop's gone to sleep, uh, where are you brocade? That one is 7 99 a metre, it's only 45 inches wide so be careful, make sure you order enough for your project. Yes. Fantastic. Lovely. Right, and then you, I've got some taffeta there, I haven't have. you? You can tell. Can you hear it? <laughs> can you hear it? It's like a monster. It's like That's... taffeta does have, more than any other fabric, I think it does have that rustly sound, yes. doesn't it? It's, it's gorgeous. It reminds though, you of colours. being a bridesmaid and running yes. around. Uh, You've got, it's got that kind of iridescence again. Is this is this is made? Looks as if it's made from two different fibres again. Yes, two different it would colours. Have been, yeah. So it's got that sort of dark blue and then that hot pink which is running through it to make this sort of beautiful plummy colour. Yes, that is um, when you've got those two colours. That's usually known as shot taffeta. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so when you're using two different colours in the weave, you usually call it shot. But this must be quite. Um, in comparison with silk, this must be quite a lot cheaper. It is, yes. This one is uh, 3 99 a metre. <laughs> so that's why it's so popular for bridesmaids dresses, because you're getting that luxurious evening feel look. look. Yes. Not necessarily the feel, it is uh, quite crispy. Mm. Um, silk taffeta is as much softer and has a much nicer drape, yeah. um, but perfect for uh, budget evening wear yes um, because 399 is an amazing price really Absolutely. Um, when we did the um silk video we mm -hmm. showed you a not duchess satin it was a dupion, dupion um, satin, and yes. uh, yeah. and that is a similar look but yes. much much more expensive so dupion i think the one we showed was 18.99 a meter yes and this one's 399 so. yes whole different but it just depends on your budget it depends yeah. what you're looking for if you've still got a gown to make and you've you know, you've got a limited budget, yeah. then that's great. But it's very stable, it cuts very easily, yes. sews very easily. Um, and um, sh they would have it in a hundred different colours. Oh, yeah, imagine, absolutely. Yeah. Imagine. No question. Excellent. Right, we've got one more to show you. Um, I think it's I'm one of Nikki's like, favourites. Oh, yes. <laughs> the colour of it is just absolutely Look. stunning. Oh, this is some stretch velvet. I'm not sure about you, but <gasps> my Instagram feed has oh. been absolutely full of velvet for months now, and I don't think it's a craze that's dying anytime soon. No. Um, but this is some of the nicest I've seen, I think. I've got, I've got a stretch velvet dress cut ready to sew, so I'm very excited about even just getting this fabric out. It is so soft. It's soft on the inside as well. It feels like satin on the inside. Mm, but then you've got this beautiful, luxurious pile. Um, and in comparison with the velvet that we showed in the cotton, mm -hmm. it's not pilling as much. No, no it's not. But it is curling at the edges slightly, which is yeah. typical of a knit. So this is actually a knit fabric. We could have included it in the knit video. Um, it's a velvet that has been made in the same way as velvet always is. If you uh, want to know more about that, watch our cottons video where mm -hmm. we cover cotton velvet in that. Um, but um, it is actually done on a, on a knit fabric, on a knit, a knit base, base. Yeah. Um, which means that it is Super, super stretchy. stretchy. So not just a little bit of elastane added, but it is actually a stretchy fabric. Yeah. Um, and What's the composition um, of this one? The composition of that one is uh, it's ninety two percent polyester and eight percent spandex. Oh, so quite a lot of stretch. So ooh. yeah, that's why it's got anything that's got spandex in it. It's got just a lot the of stretch. I love it. I just love it. Yeah. Love it. So gorgeous. Yeah. What can we make out of a third of a metre? Should we make a really, really teeny <laughs> weeny inappropriate miniskirt? <laughs> Eat. No. <laughs> 
And my legs are not up for that. No, we'll just have to buy some more from another. Yes, we will. We'll <laughs> have to go on the list. It's so gorgeous. So that's it for the synthetic fabrics. Yes. Um, we hope that's been useful. I know it's a lot of information. Synthetics mm. was always going to be, but I do it think was. it is useful to understand a little bit about what mm. it is and the production of it mm. and what it's used for, because I think it will help you to make your own decisions about which synthetic fabrics you do like to wear and yes. which ones you don't. Um, yeah. And that when you see a natural fabric that has a synthetic element to it, if it's a blend, then you won't be put off by that synthetic no, quality because you'll know, you'll know it's, it's helping yes. in some way to make it a uh, more wearable fabric. Uh, another little hint is just go on to Minerva's website because their their website is just so comprehensive mm. and it's one of the reasons we asked them to, to buddy up with us on this is because they've got such a huge range of fabrics. Loads. It's um, unbelievable. Yeah. So actually, but it's all categorised really well with yes. very clear descriptions and, and easy all the compositions. So yeah. just look at a few of your favourite fabrics and see if you can find other ones that are in the same section and yeah. compare them and contrast them and I think that will help your understanding a bit more as well. So yes. do your homework. Ladies. Excellent. Okay, so we'll be back for our final part, yes. uh, which is knit fabrics. Yay! And it's a mammoth one because there are yeah. a lot of knits. It's a big one. Get a cup of tea. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. <laughs>